Hello! This is a comic page I am inking and testing out the style of for a young adult story of a closeted lesbian set in a fictional 16th century village in northern Portugal. Whew, that was a mouthful. The story will have many of the aesthetics and social aspects of the time, um, but will be set in like an alternate reality where things like the Inquisition never happened. Because in reality, people living anywhere in Europe of the 1500s would have been persecuted for being gay. I was first inspired to make this story because of my interest in small villages in general and of the social interactions between people living in them. And for this story, I figured it would work out better for a gay person to live in a tiny village in the middle of nowhere so as to have a better chance of avoiding or escaping the mass persecutions that started happening in that century. In any case, I wanted this to be a more lighthearted, fun story with characters showing leniency for the outliers in society. So yeah, it'll be a more idealistic situation. But come on, I, I'd like to imagine that in the whole of history, there was at least one family that still cared for their gay friend or family member, or at least one small neighborhood or village that tolerated them and just like let them live in peace. I've also always been interested in things like coming of age events, courtship practices, um, fertility rituals, marriage customs of different cultures throughout time. So to have some of my quote odd characters try to navigate you know, normal society while dreaming of doing and being uh, what makes them truly happy will, I think, be fun to see unfold. I'm still working on the writing portion of the story, but I wanted to test out a few pages, just get a feel for the style and see how much interest I have in it in general. So when starting research for this comic, it was a bit hard to find online references of peasant or working class outfits from the 16th century Portugal. Most paintings show outfits of nobles or religious figures, and they're more from, you know, other countries like Spain or Italy. It seems that Spanish fashion was very popular in the 16th century. Um, I also heard that trends and in information were circulated all the time between Portuguese and Spanish courts, so I think I can take the liberty of drawing inspiration from clothing shown in Spanish paintings of that time. I may go to a museum this weekend in Lisbon to do more research and hopefully find more visual references about what the everyday person wore. The costumes worn by the characters in this first panel is inspired by those worn by the caretuj and other people doing these kinds of traditions in northern Portugal. The costumes of the caretuj seem to be the most known and documented in Portugal, just from doing a quick online search. Um, although there are others, and probably were a lot more from other regions, that were not documented or discontinued and so were lost over time. I'm thinking of making mine look more primitive and simple in material and color and take inspiration from like the ritualistic pagan winter outfits from other European countries as well. I saw a whole thread of them on Twitter and it was really fascinating to see the similarities but also the differences in details of the main outfits, the masks, and other accessories. Moving on to talking about the actual drawing of this comic, I realize I've gotten so much faster at drawing comics, which makes me so happy. Um, all of the intentional observing and studying of other people's comic art has paid off, I think. And just drawing without caring about, you know, leaving imperfections, not caring about leaving a kind of roughness, has really allowed me to let loose. I will say that the brush I'm using to ink with is key for that. You need to find the right one for you. Uh, one that flows really well. When I try to use other pens or brushes uh, in Clip Studio Paint, like the G pen for example, there's a sort of lag while drawing or I have to make tighter, slower marks so that the lines don't come out like crap. 
The brush I'm using is one that I modified from the chalk brush that comes in Clip Studio Paint. You know how when you sketch something in pencil, the lines are expressive and have this nice energy to it? But then when you ink the characters, they end up looking stiff? Well, using a good inking brush helps keep the essence of the, of the sketch alive. When I zoom in on other people's comics inks that I like, I notice that they're using a brush with texture. I think that is also key in making drawings feel more natural and pleasing to the eye, but that's my personal preference. Some people like super smooth, clean inks and colors. Also, if you're wondering, the pot thingy in the middle of the fire in the bottom panels um, is supposed to be a chestnut roasting device. I'll probably have to go back and redraw that after doing proper research on what those looked like at the time. I wish I had taken pictures while I was visiting a shop this summer in Braganza. It was a shop that had goods, all kinds of goods, made of chestnuts. And in the basement of the store, there was a mini museum showing some chestnut history and antique roasting devices. My kind of fun. <laughs> um, so this scene on this comic page depicts a smaller kind of gathering that Portuguese people have when doing a chestnut roasting party in the fall. And in the next pages, I'll be drawing a bottle of liquor that the characters bring out because there are different types of liquors that can be paired with the chestnuts while eating them. And because it has been the season for it, um, Handsome Young Assistant and I have also baked chestnuts a few times at home and enjoyed them with a bit of sweet wine or aguardent. I wonder if Korean people also had events specifically for roasting and eating chestnuts, but I don't want my curiosity to lead me down a rabbit hole of researching other things. So I'm gonna have to snap myself back. Focus! Anywho, I think that's all I'll talk about in this voiceover. After recording the time lapse for this video, I went back and corrected the details of the characters' outfits, so that part of the process isn't shown here. You can see in the last few seconds of the video how the page turned out. I hope you enjoyed hearing a bit about this comic page and my thoughts going into making it. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Help a small creator out. Thank you for watching. Wait, this is an addition to the voiceover. I just remembered another reason why I started getting interested in developing this story. A while ago, I uploaded a few comic panels onto my Instagram about a dude in ye olden days uh, who was on his way to propose to a lady who he thought was super cool who turned out to be a lesbian. And from doing those small comic panels, uh, I was reminded that using comedic elements in my storytelling is something that comes more naturally to me and that I would like to use more often. And the post is still on my Instagram, by the way, if you want to check it out. Okay, that's it. For the second time now, I shall say goodbye. Goodbye!